Hi guys, my name is Santiago and today I will show you a method that will change the way that you interact with Chainlink data feed contracts. You will discover how to reduce the current five step process into a simple five to a step process where you don't need to look for ABI or contract addresses. This video is divided into four sections. In the first one, we will see how we can interact with Chainlink data feed using Web3.js. In the second one, we will use Ethers.js. In the third one, we are going to use VM. And in the fourth one, you will discover the easiest way by using Web3.js plugins. If you already know how to interact with Chainlink data feed contracts, feel free to jump into the last section of the video. So let's keep things simple and get started. This is the five step process that you need to follow to be able to interact with data feeds. First, we need to find the contract address of the pair that we want to call. For today, we are going to use the pair Bitcoin USD in the Ethereum mainnet. Then we need to find its ABI. And after that, we can initialize the contract using the ABI and the address. For this, we can use Web3.js, Ethers or VM. And finally, we can make the call to the contract and print the result in the console. So the first thing that we have to do is to find the contract address. To do that, we can come to docs.chain.link and then we can click in overview, data feeds, feed addresses, price feed addresses. We can scroll down and then here in Ethereum mainnet, we are going to type Bitcoin and here is the per BTC USD. This is the contract address that we need. And we can also go to Etherscan by clicking here. We can click in contract, we can scroll down and we will find the contract ABI here. So we can just copy ABI. We can come to VS Code. We can create an ABI.json and we can paste the ABI here. Using Web3.js, the first thing that we have to do is to import the Web3 model. Then we can initialize a Web3 instance with a provider. In this case, I'm using a public provider. After that, we need to import the ABI of the contract that we store in ABI.json. Here is the contract address for the per BTC USD from the Chainlink website. After that, we can initialize the contract. In this case, using Web3.js, you just need to write new web3.it.contract and then you need to pass as a parameter the ABI and the contract address. After we initialize the contract, then we are able to call the contract. By using the contract instance, in this case, contract BTC, dot methods then we can type the method name in this case the function that we are calling in the smart contract is called latest answer and then finally we just put dot call and this will make the call to this contract and the value will be a store in btc price and after we receive the value i just formatted this in a nice way to print it in the console so let's run this note plugin and we can see that this is a Bitcoin price returned by the smart contract. For Ethers, everything is pretty similar as Web3.js. First, we need to import the Ethers module. Then we can initialize the provider by typing Ethers.getDefaultProvider and sending us a parameter, the RPC endpoint. Then we need to import the ABI from the ABI.json. We use the contract address of the per BTC USD from the Chainlink docs. After that, we can initialize the contract by typing new eaters.contract and sending as parameters the contract address, the ABI, and the provider. Then we can make the call by using the contract BTC instance dot latest answer, which is the name of the function that we are calling in the smart contract. And finally, we can print the result in the console. So let's run this. And here is the return value by the smart contract. And if you are using VM, we need to import the functions create public client, HTTP, and get contract. And we also need to import the mainnet object. After that, we can initialize the provider by using the function create public client by passing the objects chain, in this case will be the mainnet, and the transport in this case will be an HTTP provider. And we can send the RPC endpoint here as a parameter. Then we can import the ABI from the ABI.json. We can copy the contract address of the per BTC USD from the Chainlink docs. Then we can use the function get contract to initialize the contract. And we need to pass as a parameter an object with the address, the ABI and the client. In this case will be the provider. And after that, we are able to make the call by using the instance of the contract BTC dot read dot latest answer, which is the name of the function that we are calling in the smart contract. And finally, we can print the result in the console. So let's run this. And here is the value returned by the smart contract. 
And finally, the easiest way to interact with Chainlink data feed is using the Web3 plugin. First, we need to import the model's Chainlink plugin, mainnet price feeds, and Web3. Then we can initialize the Web3 provider, and we can create an instance of the plugin by typing new Chainlink plugin and storing this in this variable. Then we need to call this method web3.registerplugin. We send us a parameter the plugin instance, and now the plugin is ready to use. To use the plugin, we can just use the plugin instance dot get price in this case that's the method that we are going to call and then we can send us a parameter the pair that we want to call in this case we are calling the btc usd pair but you can also send different pairs like eth usd or link usd etc and you don't need to worry about looking for the addresses because these addresses are already stored in the plugin this will return the price here and then we can just print it in the console so let's run this and here is the return value. Remember that using the libraries, you need to search for the ABI of the contract and import it. While using the plugin, the ABI is already stored in the plugin. With the libraries, you also need to look for the contract address of the pair that you want to call. While with the plugin, the contract address is already stored and ready to use. Using the libraries, you must create a new instance of the contract to interact with it. On the other hand, with the plugin, this instance is already created and you can skip this step. The libraries may not be as scalable, since every time you create any functionality, you must rewrite it when you want to use it. While using the plugins allows you to create any extra functionality or any value and you can store it within the plugin, making this available for everyone at any time. And that's everything for today, guys. If you want to explore other existing plugins like the ERC20, Superfloid, Multicall, or even develop your own plugin, I will drop the link in the description so you can explore more about it. I hope you learned something valuable today. See you soon. Yeah.